Hello there viewers, Axel here. Welcome to another Axel Tech video. So, Linux Mint 19.1 was just released today, apparently. I've not been keeping up with it. I was, I was actually planning to do a different video today. Then I was looking, I was checking the RSS feeds, and it's like, oh, hey, Linux Mint 19.1. All right. I mean, I was, I was wanting to cover it anyway, to clarify. I should just get to the point. So, Linux Mint 19.1. It's a number. Ah! That was the startup sound, because I was, like, I was literally just making the virtual machine for it as I was doing this. Which, to clarify, I don't normally do this sort of thing in a virtual machine. I just decided to now, as I'm starting to do things in VMs more, because one, it's easier. Two, I'm okay with it if, as long as I'm upfront about it. And three... The more that I try things on native hardware, the more that I want to actually install them and run them on my main computer, and I need to stop distro hopping, so... Don't worry, I, I, I do it significantly less often than I used to. Anyway, Linux Mint 19.1. Um, so first things first, I do want to take a look through the install process. I don't think anything will have changed here, because I think they still... Yeah, that, that's, that's still ubiquity. So we're going to run through this real quick. I really should have probably started the recording after I actually installed it to the VM. Because everyone knows what the install process is like by now. It's ubiquity. It's ubiquitous. <laughs> like, really probably did not need to show this. If there's any installer that should be shown off, it's Pop OS, because that is, like, the best installer. Why is Netflix a featured software and service? It's, it's just... It's, it, it's Firefox. It's a web browser. What? Yeah, we're just gonna restart this whole thing. Maybe? No. Let's, let's cut it out. Let's do some editing. It's fine. We'll fix it in post. I mean, based on the naming, that sounds like one of the X apps. Installation complete. Okay, good. Restart now. Okay. So, installation is complete. It was just the standard Ubiquity installer that most Ubuntu derivatives use. Nothing spe- ah! Nothing special there. I need to fix my resolution now. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Welcome to Linux Mint. See, I, okay, now, I actually have not taken a look, personal look at Linux Mint in a while. So, I don't actually know how long they've had this welcome screen. Either way, though... Well, okay, let, let me, let me clip, rephrase that. I know they used to have, like, the welcome screen thing before, but it looked a lot different than this. So, kind of like this. It's 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 reminiscent in layout of, like, how the installer is to so somebody sees, and it's like, wait, what? Oh, it's a welcome thing. That's neat. I mean, granted, the other window did that just fine, too. This looks nicer, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway. Welcome screen will guide you through your first steps, show you how to find help, or to get more information on these maps, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so first steps. System snapshots. Oh, okay, like backup stuff, I guess. Yeah. Re restore points is a better way to put that. Restore points. Two daily and two boot snapshots are recommend. Two daily, that's a lot. Got the driver manager. I'm almost certain it's not going to have any for this since it's a VM. Uh, update manager. The thing in the system tray. Fun fact, I found out, apparently, like, the only reason that it's called the system tray, at least in Windows, is because, like, some nerds, some tech people, found, like, a systray.exe thing, and then they started calling it the system tray, but it's apparently officially only ever been called the notification area. Fun fact! Uh, let's see, the little shield icon in your system tray is your update manager, but it's not for updates, I already knew that. Right, so... With Linux Mint 19.1, we get Cinnamon 4.0. One of the highlights of this release is the modern layout. You can choose traditional. Okay, just took a second. You can choose traditional for the classic Mint X theme and all the old style theming and whatnot. We're going to go with modern here because, one, I do like that modern appearance more. And two, it's the new thing with this release. So, or I guess a new default with this release is a better way to put that. Anyway, very nice that they do have that option, though, because there are people who prefer the traditional layout. I like this, cleaner, more compact, and usually app icons are distinct enough that I can tell what it is just by looking at the icon, and I don't need the name. 
so that's all well and good. Uh, okay, while we're here, system settings, let's just launch that real quick. Now, the system settings, the way it's laid out is, of course, much like how Gnome's uh, control center used to be. I, I never remember, is it control center or Gnome settings? Why do I never remember this? I want to say control center, but then it's like, it's Gnome. Usually it's one word for the app, so usually it's like, it seems like it'd be settings. I don't know. Somebody correct me on that in the comments. Anyway. Yeah, so... In layout, it's very much like how GNOME settings used to be, how KDE settings used to be, where you have the categories and like the icons and all this stuff laid out like this. Also, how elementary settings currently is. Problem with how, with the, how Linux Mint has it here is like, there's so, so many options. Like... Wow, I mean, that's not, that's not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to have more options available, but good god. There's just so much. That's a lot of stuff. I mean, I guess, like, I mean, I say that, but it's not like it's super hard to figure out what you're doing, but, like, couldn't, like, hot corners, applets, desklets, panel, window tiling, all of that be, like, categorized under desktop? I mean, does that not make sense? Like... Th th things could perhaps be better organized is what I'm saying maybe more categories or something I don't know um because like I couldn't you just go to like desktop and have like some tabs or something to switch between the things why is there that line there is that showing up in the recording yeah that's an, I don't know why that's there right uh so your desktop icons I actually don't use desktop icons whatsoever so we're gonna turn those off uh what did I come here for I came here to Display. There we go. Yeah, why you you get larger place. We'll just Yeah, it's gonna be that weird resolution because VM uh, let's apply that. Okay, there we go, that's better. All right, keep that configuration. Let's close that now. Back to the welcome screen, which is now significantly tinier. Oh wait, right. Ah. I broke things. One sec. Uh oh. Click away, click back in. There we go. Uh, can I not move this? Wait. Didn't I just move that? Why can't I do anything? Mouse? Uh-oh. Why is my mouse not working in the thing? Uh, one sec? Okay, there we go. Wait, okay, what if I click in here now? Okay! I don't know how I fixed it, but I fixed it. We're good now. Alright, so what happens was I was trying to use, like, I'm sure a lot of you watching know how you can, like, for example, on GNOME, hold down the window key and click and drag the drag things around. Don't do that in a virtual machine. It seems to break things. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, we can make it bigger. Just don't, don't do the window key and drag. Right, so, uh, you got firewall options and software manager. We'll look at that momentarily. Actually, here, I'm going to launch that real quick. And we'll get to that in a moment. I actually haven't seen this in person yet either. That just looks like GNOME software. Except a little flatter. Maybe a bit less fancy. Okay, anyway. Documentation, you can go and... See documentation? What have we here? It's Firefox installation. Okay, it's a documentation page on their website. Uh, you can see new features included in this version of Linux Mint. So, yeah, I got the new panel layout, update manager. Yeah, one thing I've always liked about Linux Mint is um, how they like. It's not the same program, but it's basically like having Uku built in the uh, Ubuntu kernel update utility, except it's it's like their own thing and they actually maintain it, unlike Uku. So, that's kind of cool. Granted, I say that, but you could also argue for a newer user, why would you want to grant access to the uh, kernel installation? That being said... Linux Mint does do very well for the brand new user, but it uh, does also work well for the more technical people as well, because, I mean, it's still Linux. It is still Linux. So, makes it easier for those sorts of people. Software sources thing, that's always been nice as well. Like, 
yeah, it's still probably faster to add like PPAs, for example, through the command line, but from what I remember, the graphical interface is not bad for doing that. XApp sidebar. Oh, is that what that's called now? Okay. Also funny that they call it a header bar when... The... Now, wait a second. I thought the whole point of XApps was to not do header bar stuff. What is that? That looks like a header bar. That looks like a gnome style header bar right there. You got a control in the thing. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so that's the documentation stuff. Probably cut out a lot of that. Lease notes, got web forums, IRC. And you can contribute because it is an open project. Wonderful. All right. Software manager. Let's make this a little bigger. Well, at least things scale pretty nicely. Kind of. Well, that's scaling. It's kind of creepy, actually. Huh. Maybe we should leave that at the default size. Was that like that? Or a little wider? Okay. Enough playing with the scaling of the image. So cool thing with the Linux Mint software manager is it does have Flatpak support built in, I believe. Version pack is that package is summary. Yes, lower search, that's fine. Um are they just like completely integrated and not separated anywhere? Let's look at for example Spotify. Alright. Package, but a client doesn't say anything about the sources. Is Flatpak installed by default? Oh, there's a okay, there's a Flatpak category. That's how that works. So you got things like Discord, Visual Studio Code, Pulse Effects, Atom, Keep SXC, LibreOffice. So you do have the Flatpaks in there. I it seems like they're separate from the rest. Let me see here. Discord. Okay, so it does still show up, and you click that, com.discord, mention it's a flat pack right there. So do they show up under the general categories? Like if I go to internet, will I see discord here? Internet chat. No. They will show up and you search, but they are not seamlessly in the categories. I would... I mean, I'd, don't know how I feel about that really, because I, I kind of, like, in on, on one hand, it's kind of nice having them separate but like if you're a newer user and you're just browsing this and you're like and you see flat pack it's like what the heck's a flat pack that's what sorry there was a siren like you see that and it seems like that's kind of weird and you click into it and it's just like what is this random assortment of apps now, granted, much of the flat pack stuff is probably also going to be things that people will recognize because it's, you know, usually they... like a lot of flat packed stuff. Let me rephrase that. A lot of, we'll say, bigger third party applications, for lack of a better term, usually they're going to be in the form of a flat pack or a snap nowadays. So. Yeah, so I might come under the flat pack section and just be seeing this stuff and like, wait, why are these not like categorized? Why why are all these random apps in their own section? Because average users probably not gonna know or care what a flat pack is. So I don't I don't I don't see why they separated it into its own category. Because like, let's say if you want to get Discord and you and you're the type of person who likes to look through categories and not like search, and you're like, huh, wonder if they have Discord. Internet? Okay, chat. What? No Discord? And then let's move on. And it's like they're like the average user's not gonna think, oh, maybe it's under Flatpak. I mean they might, but you know, I mean if anything, maybe they'll see it and they'll just be like, huh, what's Flatpak? And they'll check it there and then find it. I don't know. That was a long rant for me to basically say I don't see why it's a good idea to have flat packs in a separate category from the main applications. Just seems kind of weird to me. Anyway, yeah. Software manager, very similar looking to GNOME software. Um, technically, these buttons are. 
different and random shadows appear. That's probably because I'm in a virtual machine. So other than that, yeah. Other than that, biggest change, of course, with Linux Mint 19.1 is the addition. <coughs> oh my God. The addition of the modern panel layout, which has, of course, the Mint Y theme by default, which includes the Mint Y icons and whatnot. That, that is what they're called, right? Or is it just Mocha? Yes, Mint Y icons. Okay, I'm not crazy. I guess I can take a quick look at the update manager as well. So, just hold on your operating system. Yeah, that's security updates, software updates, system snapshots. Apply all available updates. Okay, what? Well, wait, wait, wait. Linux Mint recommends to set up automated system snapshots and to apply all available updates. Interesting, considering how the update manager used to be. Again, I don't know when that in particular was changed. That might have been a Linux Mint 19 thing rather than 19.1. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, so, okay. So do they just not even anymore mention the whole choose what... That was fridge. Choose what level of updates you want to do. Like, I forget what it used to be. What the categories used to be. But, okay, so they've... They've certainly addressed that criticism then. Because I know they used to have it where it was like... It, they, like, they had like three choices between like... I, I can't remember what exactly the choices were, but it was really controversial because it was like some people might not do like security updates or something because it was like part of kernel updates or something, and it was kind of a mess. Um, does remind you to do system snapshots in case something breaks. Gonna not do that though. Got all these updates available. So yeah, that, that is a nice thing to have changed in the update manager. Make sure people keep their systems up to date in case of like security fixes and whatnot. Good stuff there. Other than that, that is Linux Mint 19. I would not be surprised if I am forgetting things that were um, also included with this update. I, mean, I, I, did, I did go over the changelog. So, or the what's new page. I don't think I missed anything important. But if I did, I'm sure somebody will mention things anyway. Let me know what you guys think of Linux Mint 19.1 down in the comments below. I... So when I first started using Linux, Linux Mint 17.3 was the uh, first version I installed. I think that was also around the start of when they started like introducing the Mint Y theme. And it did work well and it was very stable. It was also just kind of boring. Like, I, I really can't think of a better way to put it than Linux Mint was boring. And, yeah, I don't know. It just, like, felt too old school, I guess. I really don't know how to put it other than boring. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you dudes in the next one.